is green. Anyways, we also uh, got one full-time uh, monitor. This is Paul Ballinger. Uh, that was very critical. Uh, we had a hard time keeping part-timers, especially with the economy flourishing like it is right now. Uh, we have a real hard time getting part-timers at all. Uh, cloud technology for storage, uh, pictures, uh, videos, and all that. We don't have enough room, so uh, David helped us out with uh, introducing us to cloud. So uh, you could probably explain better what cloud is than I can, but it's another area where we can store our photos and our pictures so we don't slow down our computers too much. Crisis oh, that's right, group crisis intervention. Thank you. Uh, we also got a shallow water boat. Uh, and we had all these floods last time. We got it out a couple times to uh, help people um, retrieve their kayaks. Uh, when the water is flowing, sometimes in some of the bridges, there's only about that much of a gap between the water and the, the bottom of the bridge, and people are still out kayaking in that. And I'm sure they didn't know it when they hopped in the water, but they learned in a hurry. Um, but we got that, plus we also had some uh, rescues that were in muck. Well, that thing will go through muck. It'll go through uh, four inches of water, is that right? So we can use that even in the, uh, when the ice is starting to thaw and you still have your ice fishermen going on out there, we can still use it for stuff like that. They'll put in our officers any more risk than we have to. I know that voice. What's that? We're not moving. There we go. Medication carts. Uh, those things are expensive, so it took some saving, and uh, we managed to get three of those things. Uh, we have to have those carts that lock up. Obviously, we're in a jail for obvious reasons. I got a new dishwasher. Uh, thank you guys for helping us out with uh, getting that kitchen equipment. The uh, new convection oven, that was huge. That's, uh, that saves us a lot of time, uh, a lot of burns, because the old convection oven, they had to pull things on out, turn them around, put them back in so they'd cook evenly. With a new one, we don't have to do that anymore. Uh, we got weapons purchased for correction officers. Corrections do a lot of our transports, or all of our transports, and they also come into court with prisoners, so we want them armed. And we also got some vests that were purchased with some grant monies. This right here is a little layout for the public, uh, kind of so you understand the sheriff and under sheriff and uh, the executive assistance responsibilities. This is just in a nutshell. There's over 350 laws that we have to per that pertains to the office of the sheriff and the operations thereof. This corrections division. Uh, we got a lieutenant running the corrections, and uh, he has his support staff around him too. And again, there's a lot of laws that pertain to operating a jail. You look at some of their. Am I going to buzz or not? I had to move the microphone. If you look at some of the uh, daily routine duties of. Uh, the corrections, it's uh, you know, monitor inmates for compliance of rules and regulations of facility. It's important, it's also mandated by law. Uh, we have rules, we've got to be very strict with them with the rules. We avoid fights uh, and lawsuits by making them adhere to the rules. Booking and releasing inmates, and you'll see how many of those we do in a few, a few slides down. Uh, a lot of fingerprints, uh, photographs for the bookings. We do inmate cell searches. Every now and then these guys will hoard food or they'll make like toothbrushes. They'll try and make them into weapons or something like that. We need to be able to protect not only our corrections but also the other inmates inside the jail. Court transports, um, I'm sorry, inmate classification, that's important. That's one of those hard things we're having with a jail as it is today. We don't have all the room, so if I got an inmate that's uh, should be in maximum security, and we only have two maximum cells and they're tied up, we have to ha find some place to put that inmate because we can't put them in with a general population and you can't put them in with people who uh, have not been sentenced yet. And if you think about it, if you haven't been sentenced yet, you're innocent until proven guilty. So you haven't been convicted of anything yet. And now we're putting you in with somebody who's convicted of something violent. 
and that can can be quite tasking for us. Now, one of the hardest ones is the female inmates, and when we classify them, we only have one area for them, so we have to kind of take turns in letting them in and out of their rooms. So that, that, again, that becomes quite tasking for the corrections and keeping track of all that. Uh, court transports, drug screens, DNA collection, and inmate visitation. And they're allowed one visitation per week. Other corrections, uh, scanning clerk, our building's so small we run out of storage space so we started getting a clerk in there to scan and put things on, on DVDs. So those are a lot easier and we can store a lot of information on those. Uh, law enforcement, got four sergeants. What we did is we divided up the law enforcement in four teams, A, B, C, and D. Uh, two on days, two on nights. They work six to six. Uh, night shifts have four deputies and uh, one sergeant. When we uh, work night shift, a lot of times, uh, like the uh, the townships, Perryville and Berry Township, they're not on 24-7. Uh, is Nashville on 24-7 yet? Uh, close. Yeah, the Nashville's working on it, but they're not on 24-7. Well, that is our duty to cover those when those guys aren't there. Uh, we got investigative, one detective sergeant and one detective. We got a canine. Uh, 416 secondary, that's road patrol. That's where you actually go on out and look for speeders and drunk drivers on our secondary roads. That's a grant. And it started, I think it was like 1972, wasn't it? Somewhere in that ballpark. And uh, we get grant monies from the state on that. Uh, we don't have anybody in the sweat unit right now, which is the undercover drug narcotics team. We, uh, we're down two deputies right now. We're having a hard time filling those positions. We don't, I used to have anywhere between 20 and 40 applicants in my uh, drawer at any given time, and I got zero right now. There's such a demand for law enforcement right now. Same thing with corrections. Middleville unit, we contract out with the village of Middleville. We got one sergeant and two deputies up there handling those calls. They have five reserves up there. And they do a lot, a lot of the same functions as my posse. Here's some of your statistics from the 416 Secondary Road Patrol. It's an OHSP, Office of Highway Safety and Planning grant. And as you see the, the lines, uh, each line is a different year. Going from uh, left, it's 2013-14 to right, which is 2017-18. and. This, you'll see the 2013 to 2014 because the state year, the fiscal year is different than ours. We, we do a calendar year, they do an October to September. Other enforcement, we handled uh, 9,734 complaints last year with 14 deputies. A lot of, a lot of complaints per deputy. Traffic accidents, we had 1,007, uh, six resulting in fatalities, 131 in the, uh, those, they're also fatalities when we killed a deer. Uh, I'm sorry, 564 involved the deer. 131 was just resulting in injury. Uh, traffic enforcement, 624 citations issued, 71 alcohol related, and 103 uh, basically drunk driving arrests. Animal control handled 330 complaints. And then we still do home checks. Those are for the uh, Swift Insure program. That's a grant that this, the courts get. It's a very strict probation, and we help out with that, checking people when they're in their homes. We ran a lot of criminal histories, that's what CCH is. Uh, 941 sex offender registrations completed, and uh, that doesn't mean we got 941 sex offenders. Uh, if you're already on that sex offender list, and you can be on that sex offender list for years, they have to come in, some people have to come in quarterly, some people have to come in every six months to uh, sh basically verify their address, where they're living and uh, where they're working. 6,105 PBTs administered, that's those preliminary breath tests. When uh, courts order it, people come on in right over the counter and we administer a preliminary breath test to help the courts and the sobriety courts out. Here's your enforcement statistics. 
Last year we didn't have any homicides. The sexual assaults, those are what's repeated. Those are not what people are convicted of. Those are what we are investigating. Some of them are actual sexual assaults and uh, some of them are not. Uh, suicidal attempts, and then you had the deaths by suicide, but it was pretty high last year, we had 10. Uh, drug overdose death, they had 13. And other death investigations, we had 66. Malicious destruction of property, that's MDOP. Uh, had 102 last year. 15 larceny from buildings. 151 other larcenies, which could be from a car or from a person. <clears throat> uh, retail fraud, that's your shoplifting. I had 38 of them last year. Home invasions, somebody breaking into your house. We had 88 of those. And violation of Controlled Substance Act, that's uh, basically any illegal drug out there, marijuana, um, meth, any of the opiates, and so on. All right, warrants. Uh, we did 118 warrants for the circuit court, 358 for the district court, and 198 for the front of the court. Stolen vehicles, uh, what means 20 less than one year. We had 20 that were reported in less than one year. We have 57 that are still in the system from who knows how long. I, I, I don't know how far back those go. Uh, stolen guns, same thing. And uh, guns are kind of odd because if you get one house, one house, some guy could lose anywhere between 20 and 100 guns. So some of those are still out there. Uh, we had 80 stolen articles, 94 bond conditions that were violated, 151 probation orders, uh, 42 personal protection orders, two impounded vehicles, and 271 registered sex offenders. Here's your corrections. Corrections mandated. You have to have 20 hours of training each year to keep your certification as a correction officer. We uh, take a lot of pride that we exceed that. Uh, plus, uh, we very rarely, I hate to say this, I, I shouldn't say it, but <laughs> we very rarely get sued. Uh, our, our corrections are on top of things. Uh, they treat people very fairly back there. And it's funny because you get inmates from another jail, uh, they like coming to Barry County because they're treated with some respect. Uh, I, I can't thank my corrections enough for that. There we go. This is your admissions. The blue is the total, the red is male, then purple is female. And as you see, we had 3,621 total admissions last year. And as you see from the last Five years, it's been going up. Average daily inmate population last year was really bad. We had 97 on average. This year, we're going to be down. And what are we averaging about right now? About 70 maybe this year? 78, all right. Because yesterday we are at 80. I didn't even check today. Yeah. <coughs> And sentencing days, like today and tomorrow, our population will go up. What's your maximum? Excuse me. <clears throat> What's the maximum that you can have? You want the real technical maximum? It's a 98 and a half. Okay. <laughs> okay. 98. They do it by square footage. That's why they throw the half in there. Okay. Oh, I see. The very last line. Very tiny. Sorry. What? I'm sorry. Yeah, all right. Fingerprinting, we do a lot of fingerprinting. And those could be anything from uh, somebody who's volunteering for a church, a school, something you're dealing with children, you have to be fingerprinted. Uh, your concealed pistols, you have to be fingerprinted. Drug screening, corrections on Saturday and Sunday to help out the sobriety courts and to help out probation. They have people come on in, we do drug screenings there, and that's how many we do. Inmate visitation. Hopefully in the future we'll be able to do the video visitation. That'll cut down a lot of the traffic in and out of the sheriff's office.
Meals served. 102,899 meals served last year. Buck and a half a meal. That's not bad. I challenge you to go eat at McDonald's for that price. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. All right. <laughs> You're not proud. <laughs> These are some of the services we still provide, mental health services, medical services. We have a great working relationship with uh, Barry County Community Mental Health and a great working relationship with our uh, Dr. Messenger. By law, we have to provide both. We have Forgotten Man Ministries coming in. And basically, in a, in a nutshell, what they do is they control the church traffic coming in. Uh, we have probably around 100 churches in the county. And uh, you have to go through Forgotten Man Ministries in order to uh, do church services and Christmas services and so on. We still have community service programs. In fact, right now we have a probably the hardest working inmate I've ever seen, and he's uh, working around our sheriff's office there. Um, I just can't say enough about him. He, he keeps himself busy without getting into trouble. So he's done a lot of wonderful things. He just did a trench for us and run a pipe from one of our, uh, we had a lean-to out back that covers the steps and uh, one of our doors. And uh, we had a water problem that kind of washed out that sand underneath those steps. Uh, by the way, thank you for the steps. They got replaced. They're looking great. Uh, anyway, so he went and dug a trench all the way out to the parking lot, and he's got the eaves trough coming down into a pipe going out. And uh, he just did that uh, yesterday. He did that one day. Uh, I just, all kinds of things. Uh, just incredible. Um, pardon? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, substance abuse education, we still uh, offer that there. Cognitive behavior or moral recognition therapy, basically trying to re retrain them how to think. Um, boy, how, in a nutshell, how it's going to explain that? Basically, it's, it's kind of like the right. Yeah, right. Being able to teach them to say no, also. Alcoholics Anonymous, we still have that there. Canine activities, uh, does a lot with nar narcotics and tracking, article searches, but a lot of hours have to be put into that dog on training, especially now that marijuana is legal. Uh, the trend you're going to see is you're going to see uh, the drug dealers putting their drugs in with marijuana. And then you have to argue in court whether or not the dog smelled the marijuana or the drugs that were that are illegal now. So a lot of training has to go into that dog now. Marine Division, this guy's working the uh, boats. Uh, we got one sergeant and a nine part-time Marine deputies. They got patrol hours there, then contacts, <clears throat> then citations. Uh, boat inspections, and we still go into the schools and teach students about boater safety. Records unit. These are uh, handgun registrations. It's kind of funny, whatever the political climate is, you'll see the handgun registration number goes up, and then whoever's in office, it starts sliding back down. Other records, uh, these are the reports that are turned in. As you see, they go right along with how many complaints we've been taking each year. So in regards to your fingerprint system, um, when are you going to update that software for that piece of equipment? I mean, update. Well, I got fingerprinted last year, or this spring, and it was pretty difficult to get done because I was told that it needs an update or something and they're not supporting it anymore. Oh, they, something is that the crazy. state? Something, maybe it was me, but no, I was, I was told it's a kind of an oh. antiquated system. 
I had to do that to be a substitute teacher. Yeah, I wasn't in trouble. Yeah, uh, as far as I know, all the updates have been. Okay. I just I knew it was temperamental, and I didn't know yeah, if there was something is, new. That's a good thing because we had many. some hiccups that day. <laughs> so. Yes, way better than ink, because that was a pain in the neck. <laughs> yeah. I just didn't know for, if there's For as many fingerprints like, we do, we actually have yeah. very few hiccups. The problem is when the hiccups happen, they're quite annoying, so you tend to remember those. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Like you said, the ink, uh, like CPLs, when we started doing them, they're all ink, and it would take three to four months for you to get your concealed pistol license. Now, what is it, a week, two weeks? Yeah, and same thing with uh, teaching and all that. We get their fingerprint results back pretty fast now, so they can start sooner. Yeah. Way better than ink. Oh yeah. I hated doing <laughs> those. Yeah. Uh, Sheriff's Posse. These guys are volunteer. It says paid 19 total for total hours. They don't get paid themselves. What happens is they uh, like the fair. They'll pay them so much to come out and do the security for the fair all week. And that money goes into the posse, so they can keep the posse running. So it goes into their training equipment and, and so on. I have a question. Sure. What's the difference between the reserves and the posse? Reserves started uh, with uh, like police, and uh, the posse falls under the power of the county under posse comitatus. And uh, remember the old days, the posse would go out and chase down the bad guy. That's your posse. Yeah. Uh, reserve unit, they're more like a second uh, man in a patrol car. Um, there's really not a great amount of difference on it, but just remember the posse is uh, kind of a protected authority that the county has, and that's what it means. Posse comitatus is the power of the county, and uh, their duties are to go out and ferret out all criminal activity in the in the county. So there's not much of a difference there. Anyways, I did 2,109 hours of volunteer time last year. And uh, if you're interested in joining the posse, you got to submit an application. They're very thorough on their background checks. They go home, do home visits, talk to your neighbors, and see what kind of person you are, and so on. Victim Service Unit, another uh, excellent volunteer unit. Uh, this is basically a pie chart of uh, what, what they do. Um, they handle quite a few. Uh, DOAs, which is uh, death investigations that we do, they come on out and help us uh, contact family members and stuff like that. And uh, they will also go on out and do the notifications to family members. And uh, well, it takes a special person to do that, and I got a great group right now. Uh, domestic violence, they uh, will bend over backwards trying to help out a victim of a domestic, domestic violence with transportation, uh, court, uh, green gables, and so on. Any questions? All right, then. Mr. Geiger. Uh, thank you, Sheriff. Um, I have one question, but first um, I want to say I very much appreciate um, your vision statement. It says the vi it's the vision of the Barry County Sheriff's Office to be recognized as a model community-based criminal justice agency. That is a great vision. And uh, anybody that's uh, worked with your deputies know that they believe it, too. So my question is, last year the average population of the jail was maxed out at 97, which is operationally 100%. What type of offenders should be in jail but aren't because of space? Well, that's not my call. You should be asking a judge that. Yeah. We just hose. But we deal a lot with the sex offenders. And... Uh, So, yeah, so it's not your call who goes out, but yeah. you, but there well, are people that are out 
not inside the jail that normally would be. Right. We, most of our population last year, too, uh, right around 60%, was people who couldn't post bonds. They, quite frankly, the, um, when the state started that public defender's office, that did reduce our population. Thanks, Sheriff. Any other questions? What do you, what do you see from 2016? You were just over 2,500. And I see the, the pop, or as far as admittance go, it went up to 3,600 last year what do you see the trend is it sex offenders or drug offenses or well <laughs> I mean you're growing a th yes. third in two years um, it's not uncommon to be going down to our detective bureau I don't even have to ask him what kind of case they're working on and most of the time it's some type of sex offender investigation whether it be a child molestation or something like that some of them like I said about I ask, give me a guesstimate on which ones are actual, and they said they think about 50%. Um, uh, usually the trend is too, is we have people who are hooked on methamphetamines or opiates or something like that. We catch them, they go to jail, and they get out of jail, they go back into it, they get back into the same group of people they're hanging out with and end up back in the jail again. <clears throat> when they go to prison, you're gonna see a little bit of a lull before they come back. When they start getting out of prison, you're going to see the, the jail population going up. Uh, anything else I'm missing? No, just <clears throat> so a lot of these specialty programs are out of state. Yeah. Probation, so you, know, you may have one individual that is, was, was violated. Out for a while, they come to jail for a week. Out for a while, you know, they do the patient under parole. Obviously, they're going to. Send more people to jail for parole violations and not send back to That may be when you go to jail here. Because they're, you know, they, they, want, they want to keep the prison population reduced. So, the offender could be you know, parole violation several times before they're actually on either. Yeah, that's, that's a big one. They started shutting down some of these prisons that kind of got dumped onto the county jails. Yeah. Their mother must be proud, get to go to jail 10 times in one year, man. But uh, no, well, I just looked at that number and I said, if you're if, if in two years you're going up almost 30% in admittance, that's unsustainable. I mean, I don't know how you, how do you project facilities based on that kind of growth, but if you're saying that number is going down now, or with the public defender's office and some of the things that are happening, or maybe some cooperation with the judges that's working, it just, that number jumped out of me when I saw that. So. Oh yeah, that's with us too. And, well, the sobriety courts too, you get somebody first time in the sobriety courts, reality is we kind of expect them to fail their first attempt. It's, it's an addiction that's hard to get over. And uh, you know, if they fail, then what you do is you put them in jail and they have to detox. When they, uh, I forgot how many days, usually about two weeks, yeah, usually about two weeks they'll put them in jail to detox, then they get them on out, they have to go in front of the judge again, hey, you made it two weeks, let's try longer. And they'll try a different treatment with them. So that's a lot of our admissions. Thank you. Any other questions for the sheriff? Thank you, sheriff. Appreciate your presentation today. All right, thank you. Um, how about a five minute break and we'll allow <coughs> our next presenter to get set up. Let's be back at um, 9.48, and that clock is still. 42 at 9.48. Yeah. Dan, I need to chair. Pony up, dude. <laughs> I bought the last one. I forgot. Oh, no, he Need held bed. up the candy dish. Too. Yeah, I know. I said that. I was meant to get another bag this evening. I'll leave candy, though.